Hi, I'd like to welcome everyone. Um, we're going to begin today with uh, Dr. Williams. Dr. Williams is president of Downstate Medical Center. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, as Eve said, Eve said, I'm John Williams, president of Downstate Medical Center. I'd like to welcome and thank all of you for coming today to hear about Startup New York and how it's working at Downstate. For those of you not familiar with Downstate, we are the only academic medical center in the borough of Brooklyn. As such, our mission includes educating the next generation of healthcare professionals, fostering biomedical research, and also taking care of patients. We have a proud tradition of develop, developing medical and scientific innovations to help bring new technologies to the marketplace. In 2004, we opened the first phase of the biotechnology incubator, which is intended for early stage companies. You are now sitting in the incubator's final phase, which is about to open, as soon as we get that TCO. <laughs> in addition, together with the New York City Economic Development Corporation, we developed BioBat at the Brooklyn Army Terminal, which you can read about, for more mature companies. These initiatives were made possible through the generous support of the Borough of Brooklyn, City of New York, State of New York, and federal officials who are working to make us in Brooklyn and New York City a hub for biotechnology innovation and commercialization. In the audience, I don't see him yet, but he's supposed to be here. I wanted to personally thank uh, Councilman uh, Matthew Eugene, who has been an extremely important supporter uh, for us. Startup New York is a wonderful initiative that benefits both downstate and our companies. During the course of this program, you will learn more about Startup New York and some of the companies that are participating. And now I'd like to introduce Leslie Watley, Executive Vice President for Startup New York. Thank you, Dr. Williams, and thank you all for coming. Uh, Startup's been in, in uh, process now for a little more than a year, and it's working. But there's still a lot of things about the program that people don't know about, and it's real because we have real companies involved now. So we're trying to get out and show the public what Startup really is. That's not it. Um, you know, who some of the companies are, what it means to the schools, and, you know, address some of the noise that's out there on this. Um, I'd like to thank the panel that we have with us today, Eva, who runs the program here at Downstate Medical. We have Andres Farkas from uh, Modern Meadow, Andy Goeco from Innovimmune Biotherapeutics, um, Alexander Zoller from EHR Works, James Zia from CMP Scientific, and Dr. Asan Yazdi from Nomocan Pharmaceuticals, I'm going to address some questions to them in a little bit. But first, I wanted to start at the beginning um, and talk a little bit about what Startup is and what it's intended to do. Startup New York is an economic development program. It's one of many tools that the governor has put in place over the last four or five years to change the economy in the state of New York, make it more business friendly, and help us attract ourselves in the United States and abroad to companies that want to start up, grow, come here from someplace else. It is not only for startups, but we have a great panel of startups that are with us today. It's for small, medium, and large companies that want to create net new jobs. That's what we're all about, is net new jobs. The program has been very successful to date. As of this morning, we had 110 companies already approved in the program. And I'm hoping that that number is larger very shortly. Those 110 companies have pledged to create over 3,000 jobs in the next five years and to invest over $180 million. Now, there's two important pieces to start up and what makes it unique to any other economic development program. First, we are taking empty space some distressed, some just surplus to the campuses, and we are trying to locate companies in that empty space. What's important is that the space that the universities control, because it's university controlled space, are typically off the tax rolls, so there's no tax being paid in that space. 
Some of the properties are done in conjunction with economic development agencies, which are also nonprofits. So that's property off the tax rolls. So we're harvesting empty space, distressed space, and creating jobs in that space so that activity which does not exist today can go forth tomorrow. The other thing, and what I think is the secret sauce to this whole program, is the affiliation with the university. It's by far what is the engine to this program, and why is that? First, the brain drain that has existed in this state for decades is largely because the jobs don't exist in the communities where the kids graduate from school, right? By having the companies affiliate with a university in a way that complements the mission of the university, by definition, it means that the companies need the skill sets that are produced by those companies, by those universities. So that particularly upstate, but also in places like Brooklyn, when downstate medical graduates all these really talented kids, there is a job for them to go to when they graduate. There's also a place for them to get experiential learning while they're still at the university. Similarly, it is an opportunity for companies to gain access to the research and the talent that's at these universities. In some cases, use the equipment that the universities have that they couldn't <coughs> otherwise afford to buy themselves. And it allows their schools to get revenue as well. So again, we're creating jobs in space that has no economic activity today, and we are doing it in a way that furthers the mission of the schools. Not at cost. There's a lot of states out there that throw money at companies. We are trying to reduce the operating expense level of these companies so that as they are growing, they can have reduced expenses and they can grow here and stay here. Some of what you're going to hear from our panelists is that they are in biomedical related companies. The, the period of start to success in biomed is a little longer path than in some industries because of all the testing and trials that are involved. The other thing about startup that's important is that the governor a year or so ago also started an incubator program. The incubator here is a state certified incubator. When companies go into the incubator and they graduate, they're still a little wobbly financially. So now we can put them into startup New York where they can operate tax free for 10 years, get a little bit more on their feet financially, and then when they come out the back end and they're facing full taxes, they've succeeded financially, but they stay here they grow here. Now, economic development does not happen overnight. This is a world where we all want instant gratification. Economic development does not provide instant gratification. We are all about creating a program that has a solid foundation so that it can last and carry the state forward for a long period of time as a place where people want to do business. So evaluating it with short-term metrics is, is just not the right way to look at it. We're trying to look at a program that will help these companies, these schools succeed. From a metrics perspective, however, I must say that even when you look at the short run and you look at the last year, we have accomplished a tremendous amount. First of all, the schools are key to this program. The reason the schools are key is because they have the space and the companies apply to the schools. So the first thing that we had to do was teach, forgive the pun, we had to teach the schools what is Startup New York? What is it? Why should you want to participate? And then they had to get buy-in from their own faculties and administrations. After we taught them what the school, the, the program was, we had to teach them how to do their campus plans because there is a bit of uh, detail required per the legislation. But as of today, we have 71 schools with approved campus plans. That's huge. And the reason that's huge is it means that we have tremendous economic diversity, diversity university-wise, across this state. So I can go out and I can market New York and I can find a biomed company and I can say, come to Downstate Medical, but you can also go to Long Island or you can go to Buffalo or you can go to Upstate Medical. We have all kinds of schools all over this state and this program also takes advantage of an asset that only perhaps one other state can say they have, our university system. We have the largest state university system in the country, 64 SUNYs. We also have over 100 private universities that are like the who's who. 
So when you take that into consideration, that is a huge asset that we're trying to take advantage of. Also in the first year, we just had to get this program up and running with all the, the procedures. We have to be accountable to the citizens that this program is working and how it's working. So time is the common element that we needed to get this to where we are today, but it is working. As I mentioned, we have 110 companies with more right on its heels. Marketing. Marketing has been fundamental to this program. This is a state that spent decades creating a really bad reputation as a place to do business. And in the last five years, we have come a long way to changing the reality as well as the perception that is a challenging place to do business. But when you do that, you got to tell the whole world about that, because otherwise they don't know. In marketing, I'm a business person. I spent over 30 years um, as a corporate real estate executive, so I'm new to government. It's fundamental in business that if you have a new product or you reposition a product, you market it. We have a new product. It's Startup New York. But more importantly, we have a repositioned product, the state of New York. It is more user friendly. It is more welcoming. And we want the world to know we want you to come here, grow here, stay here. Five years ago, as a corporate real estate executive, if I tried to pitch New York to the C-suite, I would have had no credibility. I'm sorry, it's true. Now, I can walk in and I can say, okay, short list, four states, New York ought to be on one of them. They'll listen to me. It's in their head. That's the other thing that marketing does. It gets something in your head, makes it credible. Why do you think you see 12 Geico commercials in the course of a half an hour? Because they want it in your head so that when you make a decision on what to do, the first three that pop into your head, you're going to run the numbers on. We want you to run the numbers on New York. That is the goal. That is the mission. It is working. Net new jobs, utilizing vacant space, companies to complement the mission of the universities, and diversifying the economy in the state of New York. That's what we're all about. So with that, I'd like to turn to our panelists. Eva, perhaps you can give a very brief <coughs> description of the space that we're in, and then I'm going to ask you a couple questions about Downstate and New Startup New York. Okay. Um, before I actually answer, I would like to introduce Councilman Matthew and Eugene. <laughs> He's been tremendously helpful to us in, in building this building and helping to build my We couldn't have done it without so, Eva, um, can you just perhaps say a couple words about uh, Downstate? You had the incubator before Startup New York came along, and now we're here, and you've got nine companies. So just tell me, what has New York, uh, Startup New York done for you and also for your incubator? Okay, so first I'd like to just tell everyone, thank you, I'd like to tell everyone about our two sites. So on the left is the, uh, the Downstate Biotech Incubator, which we're all sitting in, and um, it's for early stage companies. And on the right is Biobat at the Broken Army Terminal, which is for more mature companies. So here at the incubator, we built it in phases, and um, right now we're sitting in the final third phase. And uh, as Dr. Williams alluded to, we're just about to receive the TCO, and we have nine more companies that are ready to move into this newly developed space. Um, in our first two phases, we have 14 companies. Uh, we have a nursery program for little baby companies, so you can have a desk or just even a bench. And then you can grow up to like 4,000 square feet. Um, all of our companies, whether they're here at the incubator or at Biobat, have access to university resources. So they can work with our scientists, clinicians, students. They can use the scientific library. They can use our specialized research facilities. And they can do clinical trials with our clinicians. Uh, we, have, uh, we are a certified business incubator of New York State. And in that capacity, we've been certified to be tax-free zones. So both sites are tax-free zones. We also received a grant, and together with Mary Howard, who's here right now, um, we're about to launch an entrepreneurship program. 
which we call the next milestone. Uh, we have workforce development programs, both for undergraduates with Hunter College and with Downstate using our PhD students to do internships. Um, once you outgrow the incubator, you can move six miles to Biobat and grow from 5,000 square feet to 100,000 square feet. And um, th we have about 524,000 square feet there. We're developing that in phases just like we did for the incubator. The first phase was 38,000 square feet and that has three companies that take all of that space the International AIDS Vaccine Initiative, IAVI. They also have still space here at the incubator, but they were the first company that outgrew the incubator and moved to Biobat. Uh, Avatar is also a vaccine development company, and Modern Meadow, who's right next to me, and he, you will hear about him, was our first startup New York company. Um, this is a joint venture with the New York City EDC, and we believe that someday this East River will become a biotech hub that will go from Biobat to this uh, Alexandria Science Park up to Cornell's tech site. So we have now nine companies that have been approved and six more in the pipeline. Right. Well, he was a walking commercial for Brooklyn, too. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the Biobat is a great example of how it was a distressed asset. Downstate Medical worked with New York EDC and we're putting this asset back to work and trying to bring companies here and creating jobs for the graduates of the school. Now, I, I have to say that one of the things that has come also from the affiliation between the, the companies and the universities is just the total coolness factor of some of the companies that we are bringing into the program. And the reason why I say that is it's been a mutual learning experience for the companies and the universities. Imagine you're a university and you're teaching your curriculum. You now have cutting edge companies that are informing you in ways that you may have to modify that curriculum to meet the demands of today's companies. And you know, in, in illustration of that coolness factor, I'm going to actually turn to our, our first company, Andres Fargus of Modern Meadow because you need to tell them what your company does. <laughs> Thanks, Leslie. Uh, so I, um, I co-founded and I run Modern Meadow. And what we do at Modern Meadow is we're developing fundamentally new ways to grow better animal products, uh, materials and foods. So think uh, leather and, uh, and meat uh, without having to kill animals or harm the environment. And we do this by harnessing uh, the tools of biology uh, to culture cells uh, and to create tissues. Uh, that allow us to grow these products from cells on up, uh, rather than having to raise slaughter and transport an animal. And um, this builds uh, somewhat on the first company that I uh, co-founded, a company called Organovo, uh, which, is, uh, which pioneered the 3D printing of human tissue uh, to create uh, little uh, human uh, tissues, little organs, that are used now by pharmaceutical companies to test and develop new drugs. And, uh, and that idea, that company was, we, we, we came up with the idea behind that here in New York, but at the time when we, when we founded that company back in 2007, New York just wasn't ready to really accommodate uh, that kind of idea, and, and we, were, we didn't have that the, the space uh, that could incubate that kind of company. So sadly, uh, we established Organovo down in San Diego. Uh, and, and Organovo now is a public company. Um, it has 70 employees. It has a 30,000 uh, square foot lab. It's a big, thriving business, and, uh, and I now feel incredibly proud to be able to create my next company here in New York because I feel that New York is ready uh, for these kinds of ideas and opportunities. So you, f you came to us by way of California and Missouri. How did you first find out that it might be another, the right time to take a look at New York? Sure. Uh, so we were, um, our, our, our labs initially were located in Missouri because uh, our scientists, our founding scientists and our technology initially came out of the University of Missouri in uh, Columbia, uh, Missouri. And we also had a business office in California. And at some point we realized that that commute was just not very practical. Um, so we, we wanted to consolidate the company and to bring it together uh, either on the west coast or on the east coast. And we looked at a number of options. Um, in, in, in the Bay Area, we looked uh, up uh, in, in Boston, um, and we really wanted to make New York work. Uh, and we wanted to make New York work because for us, one of the first opportunities we're pursuing is a very high-end, 
uh, leather material uh, that is made without killing animals, and it's a better leather. And the natural uh, users of that material uh, is high-end fashion luxury companies. Many of those companies either exist or, 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 or traffic through here in New York or uh, are active out of Europe. And either way you look at it, it's much easier to do business with them or to engage with them uh, being here in New York. And you have access also uh, uh, more closely to the creative communities that are important for us to, to, to develop our, our, our technologies, both on the material side as well as on the food side. And so um, I, I, we really started to look at, at some opportunities here in New York, and then I was very fortunate to, uh, to run into Mary Howard. Um, we, we worked together on uh, eLab New York, Entrepreneurship Lab New York. I, I was an advisor in the program that she's running, and I, and I told her about the fact that we're looking uh, at opportunities here in New York, and she connected me to Dr. Eva Kramer, and that was a very serendipitous connection uh, because we were one of the f uh, first companies to become aware of um, uh, the Brooklyn Army Terminal and the fact that there is incredible infrastructure there. Uh, and so, frankly, everything we could have possibly hoped for, we found um, at the Brooklyn Army Terminal. So we're uh, right now subleasing space from the International AIDS Vaccine Initiative. We're taking uh, about nine, 10,000 square feet in a 40,000 square foot lab, lab suite that is uh, incredible infrastructure, better infrastructure, frankly, than I saw in the Bay Area or elsewhere. Um, and we have room to grow because the Brooklyn Army Terminal is a four million square foot <laughs> complex. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a great space for us to be. Thanks. Andy, uh, you're a graduate of the incubator program, um, and you're also in the biomed industry. Tell us a little bit about your company, and then I think it's worth explaining to the audience you know, what I mentioned earlier about the growth pains mm. in, in biomed. Yes, um, thank you very much for the invitation. Innovium Biotherapeutics is a specialty drug discovery company. We're actually not just cool, we'll probably be the coldest biotech company <laughs> since we're developing first-in-class, best-in-class immunomodulatory drugs for autoimmune diseases and cancer. So the company was founded six years ago and um, actually through Lindsay Harkin is there, who told me to contact Dr. Eva Kramer and uh, we started as a, as a baby, actually, here, occupying a nursery. As a nursery, yeah. uh, a, a one bench space from two employees. And with the support of Ava Kramer, SUNY Downstate Medical Center, we are in an expansive phase right now. Uh, but talk really, about that. Talk to us yeah. about the realities of how and when. Mm -hmm. you know, you've committed to add staff. <laughs> but the realities of doing that and the thoughtful things that you have to do to do that. Yes, it's, it's of course very, very tough. We don't have a billion dollar budget, budget like GSK or a Pfizer where a graduate from MIT, Harvard or Oxford will be recruited to us. We cannot afford to pay $150,000. In fact, what we're doing right now, we've expanded our headcounts, five headcounts recently and our HR division, the way our VPs, and even I myself, plead to the candidate in bringing that person in is that, listen, you are going to be part of our success of our company as we grow, as we sign licensing deals with the global pharma companies, and your tax-free status is pretty significant. It beats out stock options. So that's a way of attracting talent. And of course, New York has talent, not just New York, though. Jupiter, Florida has talents too. Kentucky has talents. States which directly support startups. We were actually tempted, I never told Ava about this, I'm sorry to embarrass you, but <laughs> had we not received a startup New York designation, we were thinking of moving to the state of Kentucky. We, we won several millions of dollars of NIH grants and the state of Kentucky, a Republican state, directly infuses grants to companies with NIH SBAR grants. Florida, notwithstanding the bad weather we have here, nine, 10 months a year, they have fantastic facilities there. You know, Scripps Research Institute in Jupiter, Florida. Big talent, tax-free. So um, really, the startup for us is really so helpful. And I'm a diehard New Yorker, so I'm very happy for, you know, uh, Ava support, Leslie support, and the governor support for companies like us, because we want to put Brooklyn in the map of drug development in the world, and we can do it. 
Thank you. <laughs> Alexander, yeah. uh, you're a biomedical technology company. So yes. maybe you can tell us a little bit about your company and how you found out about startup. Sure. So healthcare information technology company. So uh, we develop a productivity suite called EHR Works. EHR stands for Electronic Health Records. So there's been enormous push by federal government for physicians and all medical providers to implement electronic health record systems. And we make interactions between physicians and electronic health record systems much easier. Uh, we enable a platform that allows any healthcare provider to really build their own system from multiple third-party applications and services that will seamlessly work together. Uh, there's a lot of big focus on physician-patient engagement. Uh, we're using mobile applications and telehealth technologies. And our goal is really to build a complete full patient's health record um, derived from multiple sources of data, we'll, which will be available and accessible by physician at the point of care. And so. how did you find out about startup? Well, we've seen ads on TV. Um, friends pointed out to me to TV at Startup New York. Uh, we, at first, were looking where to you know, park our company when we started last year. Uh, New Jersey was one of the suggestions. And then we saw Startup New York ad. I lived in New York City. We reached out to Eva for SUNY Downstate, made an excellent choice for us because of their medical center and the facilities. And uh, months later, I moved my family to Brooklyn, and uh, here we are. So. What does the program mean to you economically as you try to build your company? Well, aside from obvious economic advantages, uh, there's also advantages of working with SUNY. So there's tremendous uh, collaboration opportunities with SUNY Downstate, uh, particularly. Uh, for us in the medical space. Okay, thank you. Uh, James, yes. tell us a little bit about CMP. Sure. Um, so we are a, a, an identical instrumentation company. We make uh, small devices that gets attached to the front of mass spectrometry, which is a, a, a gigantic instrument um, that weighs 1,500 pounds. <laughs> and we, we make devices add to that so that people can, can y connect a separation unit uh, instrument to the mass spec so that they can uh, characterize drugs more efficiently and then get a more in-depth in uh, knowledge of the, uh, of the drugs, therapeutics. So uh, we already may have the product uh, you know, sold to uh, some of the top farmers and we have been uh, getting started in collaborations with some of the global instrumentation companies. So uh, we have some more exciting news uh, that we wish we could uh, disclose maybe very shortly, maybe in a few months. Mm -hmm. so. How did you find out about the program? I heard from Eva. Um, uh, we, we started in Hoboken, New Jersey, and, and um, you know, I, I live in Queens, and my family is in Queens, and it, the community was too, too uh, difficult, right? I, I drove through my head every day, back and forth. <laughs> so I did it for, for about a year, and it was too difficult. So uh, you know, uh, we were thinking about moving to Long Island and you know, some places in the city that are close to, uh, to Queens. So you know, we, we, uh, we searched uh, online the incubators, by the incub incubators, and made several phone calls. And I talked to Eva, and she immediately pointed out to me that, hey, you, know, you should consider a start in New York. And uh, then I you know, immediately did some research on that and found this is a great program. And, and you know, I, on the second day, I, I drove by and uh, met uh, Eva and David and Sam, and, you know, and this is how you know, we started. And, Talk a little bit about um, the importance of clustering in the biomedical industry and what it means for you guys to interact with each other as yeah. well as run your own company. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that, that's very critical for us because uh, besides instrumentation, uh, another critical uh, uh, no, part of the, the cash flow is that we do services, right? We, we provide uh, uh, analytical services uh, to customers. And uh, we, you know, we just we, we found that being in part of a big family with, with lots of companies around, uh, we can attract lots of business. You know, and, and Andy is one of our customers, <laughs> and we we you know, we, we end as the you know, the account the Yes, right. <laughs> right. And uh, and also uh, you know the location of, of Brooklyn here is the, it's in the hub of uh, you know Boston, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and and uh, Manhattan. You know, so we have customers. From farmers, they can visit us. They, they check out facilities because before they assign a large projects to us, they check what we're doing, they see what instruments we have, they see the surroundings, and they do everything. So, and, and being located here is, is of great advantage to us. Dr. Yazi, I'm going to ask you a similar question in a moment, but um, back to startup for a moment. 
Again, the affiliation with the university, this clustering concept is something that we are finding is becoming incredibly important all over this state, from Stony Brook to Downstate Medical to Buffalo to the middle of the state. We will gain momentum over time. Again, we are in this for the long haul, but as we draw companies to the program, they're going to start attracting other companies to each other and that's also going to spread through the supply chain. So what we're trying to do here is also enhance the biomedical community so Brooklyn becomes known as a place for biomed. It's only going to help the community in a lot of other ways as well. Dr. Yazdi? Right, I think uh, we are the youngest uh, company on this panel. We're only six months old. Um, uh, the company is called Nomocan Pharmaceuticals. Uh, we are a oncology startup company formed around the technology out of SUNY Downstate Medical Center. So we're local. Um, uh, we have a first-in-kind targeted therapy for pancreatic cancer that not only we're able to diagnose and identify pancreatic cancer, but we're also able to um, uh, introduce uh, a, an effective therapy for pancreatic cancer. And with pancreatic cancer becoming number two uh, cause of uh, cancer-related death in the U.S. Uh, in five years, uh, we're hoping that we will, uh, you know, be having something, actually have something to offer within the next, uh, you know, four to five years. Um, what brought us here is actually, well, where, where we heard from Startup NY is actually pretty uh, interesting because I was visiting uh, a family uh, friend out in uh, California and we were having a dinner and there was the TV ad about Startup NY and, and I had no idea about it and I was like, well, that's where I come from, so how come we didn't know and we had to actually travel out there to know about what was going on, <laughs> which, which is a good thing. Um, so um, after that, through um, Dr. Kramer, uh, who actually really uh, um, advertised this to us, and because we were small, because you know we were very local, we needed help and support from the institution. Um, and then further on, you know, through the entrepreneurship lab and the EDC help and you know uh, Mary Howard's program, uh, we got settled here. Um, and I think what's unique about um, the opportunity that we had uh, here is that we are myself and the second employee of the company now are both graduates of SUNY. Uh, and our technology is developed at SUNY. And so we went through, you know, we obtained uh, an exclusive license to our technology, and then we transferred over here, which is everything is basically local. Uh, we created jobs, we were able to actually attract investment. So local investment, you know, came here into the local area with the local people. And we're trying to advertise that um, into, um, into the uh, neighborhood that, you know, that we can actually, you know, establish something like this. We can, we do have the potential. We don't have to really be in Manhattan to, to uh, you know, make the headlines. We are here and we're sure that we will make the headlines, hopefully, with our uh, new drug for pancreatic cancer. Great. I'd also like to give a, a shout out of a couple companies that are in the audience that are hoping to sit at a future panel, and that is uh, Cellmatics, uh, and we have Priya here, um, and another company, IRX, and we have Jeffrey who hang up in the front row. As we get more and more companies like this in and they meet each other and the word gets out, uh, this is only going to grow and it's great for downstate medical. I don't know if you want to say anything in conclusion, Eva, on what the program's meant to your... Yeah. In, in conclusion, it, it is really terrific for the university as well. I mean, as you can see, these are really brilliant, smart scientists and, and um, so th this gives wonderful opportunity for our faculty to work with other scientists, for our students to work with other scientists. So it broadens the base of what's available at the university. There's the ability for our students to do internships here. There's the ability for these people and with their expertise to help our scientists who are just starting out to start their own companies to be able to talk to people and have expertise on that. Um, it also serves to attract faculty and students to the university. Just as an example, I had a medical student, first year medical student came to see me and said, you know, I came to Downstate because you had this incubator. 
And um, he said, can I start an entrepreneurship course here at the university? And so he said, sure. I mean, just as an example. So it's just a wonderful opportunity for the university as well as for the company. I, that actually brings up just a great summary, which is, you know, all aspects of, of life are competitive, right? The universities are competing for students, and they're also competing for top talent. And this program is helping them attract both. New York State is competing against 49 other states and a lot of other com countries for companies to come here. And all states have economic development programs in order to attract those companies and compete. This is a program that, again, is all about net new jobs. We're taking vacant space. We're taking the universities and their science and their resources. And we're bringing public partnerships, private partnerships together in a way that hasn't been done before. We're trying to find companies to come to the community that need the kids that we're producing at those universities in the community. And at the same time, we're diversifying the economy in these local communities. That's what startup's all about. We're about a year into it. We've got momentum, and there's more to come. We'll be back. Thank you. Oh, a tour. For those of you that are interested, what we'd like to do is show off the companies and show off the space that we have here. Uh, the trials that resulted in the utilization of this miniaturized system uh, did take place here at Sony Downstate. So across the street, we recruited more than 400 patients. And uh, we are now funded, actually, for, for a small trial that we're running at Methodist, by which we upload a particular EEG that we record, record utilizing the system and have remote neurologists provide an interpretation. The huge leverage of utilizing our system is this other FDA-approved headset that would allow any technician without any prior knowledge in EEG to record in an acute care context in any facility. So this is highly needed also in the sports space, mm -hmm. by which you don't need to mobilize neurology labs or have a neurologist present to the facility for an EEG to take place or even a certified tech. This is a pre-gelled system it's a peel and stick. We, we teach normally technicians, existing technicians, and we've done several other trials, to perform the procedure from A to Z. It's literally a headset that is pre-gelled with several sensors that would allow us to monitor the brain from various regions. As you see, this is the frontal, this is the occipital, as well as the tem temporal. It's a peel and stick system that we normally apply on adults. And this is FDA approved. Uh, the other, there's, there was one thing which I thought we should mention is the reimbursement scheme. Uh, it took me a while before we even got to a stage where we could bill for this procedure. Uh, and there's something called, I'm sure you're aware of that, the CPT code. Uh, this procedure right now has a CPT code. And what helped is the several clinical trials that we performed here, as well as uh, uh, in, other, in other hospitals, but it was mostly across the street in SUNY Downstate. And this is one of the reasons of why we're still here. Most of the funds that we've received uh, were from NIH to run several trials that took place here at SUNY Downstate as well as at Kings County. Uh, and even the feasibility at the time we applied for grants from NIH, the big reason was we can demonstrate feasibility for the simple reason that we are in the incubator across the street from all these facilities and the clinical contexts where we could run the trial. Uh, I would like to add that this also right now is receiving so much attention in the sports concussion field, mm -hmm. where you would always want to assess whether a particular subject or athlete or kid uh, is allowed to go back to the field. There's something that we know about as physicians called second impact syndrome. So after a mild injury, I'm still allowing these kids or these athletes to go back to the field and get another hit that would exacerbate the prior hit. Uh, and we have an algorithm that would interpret uh, the severity index or would assess the severity index after minor hits prior to releasing these athletes back uh, to the field. Uh, uh, apart from also identifying electrographic anomalies in patients who present with confusional states, all the way from confusion to coma, we lose access to the cerebral function of the brain. And that's why we need an EEG to assess seizures, to assess spikes, to assess even slowing, various electrographic abnormalities that would change management. Uh, Downstate is one of our clients right now. They've utilized two of these systems in the ED 
uh, to record from patients with neurological emergencies. Uh, and here I would just want to mention also a huge credit to Dr. Andre Fenton, who was one of the co-founders of our company, and he's been here for the last probably 10 years. Uh, we, he actually co-founded as well as co-developed uh, this, whole, this whole setup. It's really wonderful. I mean, he's developed this. I mean, oh, he can show yeah, you. Yeah, I would just want to show you how we differ from the standard protocol, and this is what we presented to NYCEDC before we got also their pilot uh, to utilize this in community hospitals and have other people also use the setup. And again, thanks to NYCEDC. This is a disposable headset, so you don't need to actually refurbish in between usages. You could have any technician just apply this disposable electrode and interface it to the miniaturized system as opposed to this large device which normally requires a technician or a neurologist to even present from the neurology lab to perform the procedure. That's the remote reading which we've done recently by which we upload the EEG scan and allow other people or other neurologists to log in remotely and interpret it. Uh, uh, the main, this is about 4 to 10 percent of our patients present to the ER with a form of altered mental status, or they are eligible for an EEG just because of their alteration. Uh, and this is where we want to detect silent electrographic anomalies using our system. Now that we have existing techs performing the procedure, we don't need to mobilize the whole neurology lab or wait even for this patient to be admitted to get this procedure. It, the, the fact that we're doing this early on in the process is changing the trajectory of these patients and allowing them to be admitted to a better, to a better context. Uh, this is just comparison to other existing devices. These are the many publications we did showing how we do not differ from other systems. We're even immune to certain noise, existing noise in certain contexts, such as the ER. These are the features of the StatNet, which we've talked about disposable, you just record once and then you toss this off, you just uh, simply throw it away, you don't need to refurbish in between usage, usages or wait. This is an example. This is one of our patients actually here at SUNY Downstate receiving a StatNet, which is with, with, less, with less than four hours we could have people with no prior background in EEG perform this whole procedure. Well, Thanks. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Much. Thanks a lot. Okay, so this is a great example. They went from being very tiny and just trying to develop this to now going through the FDA <laughs> to now they're selling it. So it's a wonderful Thanks. example. Thanks. They've come a long way. Yeah.